This is Dolany TV, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. Welcome back to a Friday edition of Edmonton Oilers discussion. And yes, you're probably wondering yesterday where the heck my discussion on Marcus Niemelinen was. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is here, it is today, it is all that. Because we've got an interesting situation in which, well, the signings weren't done, right? You've had... Uh, Bang, Gaetan Oss, you've had Bang, then you had Lenstrom, Bang, then you had, of course, Niemelinen, and now you've had Berglund this week. Guys, this has been the biggest news week for the Edmonton Oilers since uh, March 11th, all right? So this has been a crazy cycle, and don't forget about the Bakersfield stuff going on as well, and that's what I touched on with the James Hamlin signing yesterday. The reason the Hamlin video came out instead of a Niemelinen video is because, of course, Shea took some time, uh... To talk to us here on Dolany TV. I appreciate that. Of course, Shay spent some time with Medicine Hat, so I had to get him on to discuss Hamlin and get us a little bit of an idea of what we're looking at on an AHL deal down there in Bakersfield going in for the next two years. Now, Nimalinen, the theory and the thought behind why I didn't talk about it yesterday as to why I'm talking about it today with Berglund is simply put, remember the other day, uh, other week when we talked about Berglund and Nimalinen in the same video. Uh, you know what, it's likely if we sign Niemelin and we're going to sign Berglund. That just seems to be the way it went earlier, and that seems to be the way it's going to go now, and that's the way it went, so thankfully that planned out, because if it didn't, then I'd be owing you an explanation. However, the plan worked, and here we are. So, you've got Niemelin and signed, by all indications, will be in Bakersfield next year, and then, of course, you've got Berglund signed now, who's going to be with Link... Hold on, hold on. I gotta look at this, and I gotta, I gotta just think about this for a second. I'm terrible with my Swedish finish. All that. Linshoping. I, I'm thinking because it's apparently Schleftia, if I've got that correct from what somebody corrected me in the uh, video about Lens from the, uh, or actually would have been, pardon me, the video about Berglund and Niemelinen from a while ago. So I'm hoping. I've got it right because I've been pronouncing it Skaleftia, and if I pronounce it Linkoping, I feel like I'm going to get it wrong again. So Linshoping, Linshoping, however you say it, I hope I've got it right. Let's not get too hung up, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get to it. All right, Niemelinen, I owe you an explanation there, so shall we get to it? Yesterday, the Oilers signed Marcus Niemelinen, a defenseman, to a two-year deal entry level, of course, because he is only 21. He just completed his third season in the sweet or Finnish SM Liga, and of course, his first with Asset, and posting seven points, one goal, six assists, 42 penalty minutes, and a minus six plus minus rating in 55 games. So he's played some big time games down there in the Liga now, and he helped HPK capture the SM Liga championship in 2019, his second full season in. Finland's top professional league. So this guy did go head to head against DS Puliarvi this season. 6 6 190. So you want to talk about a guy that's got a frame to fill out? My goodness. You know what? This is maybe you look at those numbers and you say, ah, that's not too impressive. That's not what I like to see. Maybe gets the big man penalty because he's a little out of control. Uh, 190 6 6. Just wait till he fills out to about 225. Look out. This kid's going to be a monster based on those numbers. But. Let's get a little bit more on his career. 147 career games in the Liga. 15 points, 3 goals, 12 assists. So you talk about that, right? 147 games. Played 55 this year. So that's about a third. Had way more than a third of his points this year. Had more, uh, basically half. Niemelin also played with the OHL's Saugana Spirit from 2015 to 2017, which is when we drafted him the 2016 third round. 63rd overall pick in that draft. And of course, he's a. Uh, I'm not even going to try pronounce where he's from. Uh, Niemelinen represented Finland at the 2015 and 2016 World Under 18 U, uh, Hockey Championships, winning a gold medal in 2015 and a silver medal in 2016. So he is a decorated international athlete to a degree. And then you've got, of course, Philip Berglund, who signed his entry level contract with the Oilers. Today, at 9.15, the Oilers signed him to a two-year deal. Exact same thing, but this is where we go back to it. Berglund will be loaned to Linköping HC, I should, hockey club, uh, of the SHL for the 2021 NHL season or hockey season, whatever, the international calendar, whatever you want to call it. He's there for that season. 
up again after transferring from Sheleftia, AIK. So Berglund, 22. He's a bit older than Niemelinen. Just completed his fourth season with the Swedish Hockey League. This is all coming from edmontonoilers.com. I should have noted that beforehand. I hate reading press releases, carbon copy without telling you where they're from. So this is from edmontonoilers.com. Um, just quick stats, 20 points, 5 goals, 15 assists, 16 penalty minutes, plus 4 rating, 52 games played. And again, this is the beauty part about these two Euro defenders for the Oilers that were already in the system. Six foot three, two oh six. so Berglund's filling out that frame, probably top out around the 215 pound range if he wants to succeed in the NHL. And you know what, Blue Liner, of course, he's a defender just like Niemelina and these two. Pick not too far apart in the NHL entry draft in 16. 20 or 220. My goodness, my eyes are going buggy. I stared too much at uh, bright lights today while driving without sunglasses on. Guys, it's it's about 18 degrees out, I believe, in uh, Calgary today. She's hot. She's cooking. Didn't drink enough water. Hey, look at what I got. Let's take a break. Let's do that. Still tastes like iced tea from the powder I put in there earlier this morning. Anyway. 53 points total in those 200 career games for Berglund. He gets a chance to add to those next year. And of course, 10 goals, 43 assists, 80 penalty minutes, 20 plus rating. And he's also appeared in 31 playoff games, averaging 4 assists and 12 penalty minutes, plus 1 not. He's from Sheleftia, so this is going to be a change for him. He's going to a different team in Sweden. And Berglund was, as I mentioned, a third-round pick in the 2016 NHL entry draft, 91st overall. So, ladies and gentlemen, that only leaves us to go one place. You know, every time we talk about contracts, you know every time I get excited about signing new guys, things like that, you got to go over to the good old Cap Friendly and talk about what's going on here. As what's going on on Cap Friendly? Well, you've got... A guy like Marcus Niemelinen, who is going to join the Bakersfield Condors on an 817-5 entry-level deal. That's his entry-level. That's not too bad. That actually doesn't cost as much as, say, a Dmitry Samarukov. 21 years old is Niemelinen, and of course a left-hand D-man. So that whole left D situation gets even more interesting, and I think... Some people were mentioning that uh, Keegan Lowe may be out the door in Bakersfield. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here's what's happening. Lefty, you've got Lenstrom, you've got Niemelinen, you've got Lowe, who's an, well, 27 years old UFA, probably gone. Uh, William Legison, 24, don't know what's happening with him. Probably our seventh defenseman this year. So that's your lefty three out of four, three, four out of four, whatever you want to say. Then you've got Logan Day, who's probably out of the door. You've got Dmitry Samarukov for sure. You've got Philip Broberg in there who will be on loan. And you've got Brandon Manning. So essentially, I think based on this, the Edmonton Oilers have put their plan together and finally had the kind of retool offseason, pause season, whatever the heck you want to call this, all in one right here, right now. That Keith Gretzky and, of course, Ken Holland wanted to have. And that's on top of the guys the Condors have signed contracts for next year as well. Of course, they'll probably have some kind of ECHL affiliation to get them going. Then we'll see what ends up happening with the Oilers' defense. But, you know, sometimes, time to time, I like talking about my interactions with random Oilers fans out there in the ether that you've never heard of, I've never met before, or I've met before and never talked to Oilers with. And, you know what, there's a growing consensus, honestly, amongst the people I talk to regularly and the people I... uh have uh, bumped into randomly over this pause season. And today in particular, a guy talking about ridding the team of bigger contracts. Obviously on the back end, he started with Adam Larson, but it was interesting to note that one name he kind of popped up is immediately Oscar Clefbaum. Like it was Larson, not Russell. It was Larson Clefbaum. Russell kind of is how the conversation went. And that was quite interesting to see Clefbaum pop up. But that's something that's been popping up. Not due to how bad Clefbaum's performing or how terrible he is or how he doesn't fit the team. No, it's the injury prone situation, right? It's it can't stay healthy. And at $4.167 million, yes, the cap space is nice when you get the relief. But if you know you've got a defender who can't stay healthy in the regular season, what does that mean for playoffs moving forward as he continues to get injured throughout his career and then all of a sudden, right? So I get where he's coming from, and that's a full statement. So that, again, the 
evolving situation on left defense as Edmonton Oilers fans try to figure out what this all means moving forward. Each signing, each new guy into the organization officially on contract. It gets interesting. Guys, I'm Tyson. This is Stalin TV. I want to hear your thoughts. We've got Berglund on loan in Sweden next year, just like Broberg. He won't be playing with Broberg like he did last season. Then, of course, you've got a guy like Niemelinen who's all in to join the Bakersfield Condors next year. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. I'm Tyson. This is Stalin TV. I will catch you in the next one.